to establish a modern and vibrant education system that ensures maximum development of potentials of individuals, experts, and an overall of the educational curriculum in Nigeria. This, they believe, will help promote a knowledge-driven society that propels the nation's development. And now Kingsley Obum Egbulem uh, is a talent coach and author, and uh, he is here to join us. He is the author of the book, When Fishes Climb Trees. Interesting topic for a uh, title for a book. It's good to have you join us. Thank you for having me. Um, of course, you have an idea of how school curriculums work, you know. Um, some people say they they have the Nigerian British curriculum. Some say Nigerian American, Nigerian Norwegian. <laughs> but for me, the first question I always ask is, how holistic is this curriculum? Is it good enough to make a child whole and not come out one-sided or half-baked? All right. I mean, you talked about <laughs> the Norwegian <laughs> curriculum. <laughs> Um, I have always um, stated that the problem is not with our curriculum. Yeah, and that is because when you start talking about sophisticated curriculum, so to speak, it means you've addressed the basics. We haven't addressed the basics yet. And in this case, what are the basics? <laughs> we still don't have the right people teaching our children. Yeah, right now. What you have are people who couldn't get a job elsewhere, and they go into the classrooms to teach. There are very few people, very few teachers, who actually decided to teach. There are very few teachers who opted for education as a career. What you have are people who saw teaching as um, the last resort. I'm sorry to cut in again. Yes, please. Why do you think that we have less and less people taking an interest in educating our children? When, mm -hmm. when I was a, a kid, mm -hmm. um, your teacher was like your hero. You didn't have movie stars who were your hero. Your teacher was what, you, I mean, every time you were asked what you wanted to be, you say, I want to be a teacher because yeah. you loved how your teacher taught you. But today we're having less and less interest and it, I'm wondering why. But you see, one thing you couldn't, um, um, you know, doubt then was the fact that most people who were teachers then would never allow their children to teach. Really? Yes. Teachers saw themselves as the, the, the scums of society. They were not regarded. That's why if you tell someone you want to become a teacher, the, the, they literally um, pity you. And so you, you, that classroom, the classroom kind of um, became a place where the best of minds were running away from. So for me, that is the biggest problem. Let's leave the curriculum. We need to make teaching attractive. We need to get the right talents in the classroom. Right now, uh, unmotivated people, uninspiring people, people who are not talented are in the classroom. I'm not saying it's a general epidemic, but most teachers, you, if you see teachers today, I can tell you the average parent has no regard for an average teacher. So if we can elevate the status of teaching by redefining who is a teacher, who should be teaching, and what are the parameters, what are the prerequisites for accepting somebody to, you know, you can't go into the, into the hospital and expect to be treated by just anybody, true or false. But people can just wake up tomorrow and say they want to teach. And because the schools can't afford to pay well, they can hire anybody, just anybody to teach. But there is um, a standard mm -hmm. prerequisitory requirement that makes you good enough to be a teacher. We have the NCEs of this world. We have um, other educational qualifications that you need to be a teacher or a lecturer mm. or an assistant uh, trainee. So I'm still trying yeah, to understand. Thanks. And another thing that bits me, which I want to throw back at you, is you yeah. saying then teachers were scum of society, and today teach, teachers still do not have respect in the eyes of parents. Who taught them? 
And how did they become who they are today? How come we, is this a loss of values or what exactly could it be? It, it is, it is a loss of value. And I mean, you, you just hit it. Our values are not right. Imagine terrorists are paid so much money. Uh, militants are paid so much money, yet the guy who, whose job it is to prepare the, the leaders of the, of, I mean, the, 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 the leaders of tomorrow. Now, let, let me give you a very simple analogy, if you don't mind. To train a doctor, how many years do you need to train a doctor? About, about seven, about eight seven years. seven to eight years. Now, the guy comes out of university, he goes for housemanship, he goes to surf, and before he can become a doctor. Now, that is a guy who is treating you. I'm not trying to downplay the, the importance of uh, medicine and medical practice. But the person who is supposed to prepare your child, lay the right foundation, you know, we call it early childhood education, which is the most critical of, you know, the first 10 years of a child is the most important. If you mess it up, that child will struggle to catch up for life. At that level, you have an NCE. Do you know what the NCE curriculum looks like? In, in senior climbs, that should be the most difficult aspect of education for you to function. So my take is we need to strengthen, first of all, our early childhood education so that the first 10 years of a child is, is, is placed in the hands of people who are not just skilled, but people who are passionate, who are talented, people who are self-driven. And so what you pay will just become the icing on the cake. Before you start talking about the curriculum, if you are a terrific teacher, you will teach with any curriculum. One, of my, fact, one of my favorite teachers was my, my teacher in Genesis 1, and she was a youth couple. But she was my favorite teacher, and she was on teaching practice. Can you imagine? So now, those are the kind of people our system should be able to isolate. Mind whatever talent and passion that they possess, that they have, and able to channel them, push them to the classrooms. If you give now, imagine how, when this lady taught you. I'm sure she's not in the school system anymore. I'm sure. She was very smart. Good. Okay. Do you know that when you apply to study whatever course in the university and you don't meet up the cutoff, what happens? You're pushed to the faculty of education. Wow. So if you intend to study microbiology... I wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't. You're giving options. And one of them is, would you mind education? So that is how people end up studying education in Nigeria. Instead of passion. Now, in your book, um, When Fishes Climb Trees, you pointed out the price of moving kids out of their comfort zones in pursuit of courses uh, and careers uh, that they're not wired for. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I, <laughs> do you see this happening just at the university level, the secondary level, or is it even happening? It's happening the every day. Stages? It's, it's an epidemic. For instance, what did you study? Well, I, uh, my pre-degree, I studied English. In my degree, I studied linguistics and communication arts. Great. You're one of the very few people who actually, who is practicing what they studied. What I studied, okay. A majority of people went to school to study things they had no business studying. And when they graduate, they now start trying to find their level. Now, imagine graduating and that is when you start to ask yourself, okay, so what, 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 what can I do with my life? But aren't parents playing a role? Because I remember in my days, mm. when you said you wanted to study theater arts, your parents would go into dry fasting on your behalf. Some don't because, even understand what it is. Because they think that you're going to end up poor. In fact, if you said you wanted to work in the radio, they'd say, ah, you still keep coming to our house to beg for food. But mm -hmm. I was lucky because I had parents who worked in broadcasting, so it was easy. Oh, great. So is it not parents that also play a role in oh, definitely. misdirecting children? Definitely. Parents have a major role to play. And next, you have our, our educational system. Now, if you want to study, say, theater arts, 
and you can't meet the cutoff. Jam gives you something. You know, you ask the child, what are you studying? They gave me, <laughs> they gave me, they, and you question, who gave you? <laughs> now, because you were given the course, you go in there with no passion, with no enthusiasm. You graduate with a degree in political science and you have no clue what to do with a degree in political science. Mm -hmm. So you're useless to yourself, you're useless to society, and people are meant to graduate with a skill. But our, society, our school system hands you a certificate. And so, rather than falling back on your talent and your skill, we fall back on certificate. They're and there me, is a limit to what a certificate okay, can Okay, they're telling me you. we're running out of time. Well, how can stakeholders, teachers, parents, dare the move of the present curriculum to reflect the reality of the trends you know, in the 21st century? In one sentence. The private schools are doing their best, the elite private schools. But the public schools, which, is, which takes in the bulk of our kids, we need to solve the basic problem. Mm. The classrooms are deplorable. The teachers are sad, frustrated, hungry, uninspiring. And above all, most people are still sneaking into the classroom in the name of teachers who have no business being there.